Hi everyone. Today we're going to begin our journey with equations. It is something that I will be emphasizing over the next three years with you because it's very important to know how to solve equations in most of algebra um, units. So I want to start with some review. What is the opposite of 2? Hopefully you know that it is negative 2. And what is the opposite of negative 5? Hopefully you know that it is 5. So remember, opposites are the opposite side of 0, but the same distance from 0. And what we learned in what we learned in our unit, the first unit of the year, is that opposites add to 0. And we use that number line if we're at if we're at 2, we go positive 2 and then we go a negative 2, it gets us to 0. So opposites add to 0. What is the additive inverse of 2? The additive inverse is just another way of saying opposites. Additive inverse means what number do you have to add to it to get to 2? So we know that you, the additive inverse, what we have to add to 2 to get to 0, I think I said that wrong before, is negative 2. So additive inverses add to 0. Jacqueline. All right, let's start solving. So we're going to solve each equation, and we're going to use both tape diagrams and algebraic methods. So you can see it visually, but you also have the algebra. So one thing that is important that you know is that I know that you can do this in your head. You all know that a number plus 2 that's 8 would be 6. But we have to understand the process so when we get to more difficult equations, you have something to go on. You have something to work with, a process in which to help you solve. So we are going to do both tape diagrams and algebraic methods. So we'll start with this one, b plus 2 equals 8. So we're going to have our top tape and we're going to make a second tape that is exactly the same length. Oh my goodness, my puppies. So we know that this first one is 8. And the reason we made them the same length is because they're equal. Each side is equal. So now we have b plus 2, and we're not sure how long the b is, so I'm just going to put the 2 right here. So we can see that if we take this 2 away, and this whole thing was 8, this leaves us with 6. So b must equal 6. And we can check that by substitution. This is a really good habit to get into. So we knew it was 6 up front, but how you prove it is we, like I had you do on yesterday's assignment, 6 plus 2 makes a true statement. So we know that this is our answer. All right, let's show how to do it algebraically for those of you that don't like to make tape diagrams. So here's a uh, I'm sorry, I was skipping that problem. So now let's do this one algebraically. So I'm going to rewrite the problem down here. b plus 2 equals 8. We want to get this b on a side by itself. So we have to do the opposite. We have to do the additive inverse to get rid of it. So we have to, we want um, this part right here to add to 0. We don't want it here. So 2 plus what number gets us to 0? So we know that it's the opposite or additive inverse. So I'm going to take 2 away. They cancel to 0, so now I have b plus 0, or just b. But we also know that what we do to one side, if with equations, they have to balance out. So we are going to have to take 2 away from this side as well to get our 6. And we already checked it by substitution. We showed it up here. 
by taking this two away. I'm going to show you one more method. If you have your B and you had 2 added to it and it was equal to 8 on the other side. So this is called algebra tiles and yes you have an IXL on this. We could take this 2 away and cancel it out with this 2 and we're left with B equals 6. Alright, so next one, X plus 8 equals 15. So I am going to draw my first bar graph and this amount is going to be 15. And then I'm going to draw my second tape diagram or bar and we know that it's going to be X and somewhere we're going to have a line and it's 8. I'm just going to put it there. And so if I take 8 off of here, what number does this have to be to be 15? Well, 7 and 8, 7 and 8 is 15. So we know x must equal 7. So notice that when we're doing it this way, we it is not drawn to scale because my 8 looks smaller than my 7, but it gets us the right idea. Okay, so back to the algebraic way. If it's x plus 8 equals 15, we want to get rid of this plus 8 because the whole goal of solving equations is to figure out what x is. Again, the whole goal is to get this on a side by itself, so we have to get rid of that plus 8. So we're going to subtract 8. So now I have x equals 15 minus 8 is 7. I, talk, I talked on yesterday's assignment as it's working backwards. So now we just have to check by substitution. So if I plug in 7 for x, because now we think we know what it is, does this make a true statement? Yes, it does. So we know that our correct answer is x equals 7. All right. For this page, I would like you to pause and try to do 12 equals 8 plus x on your own using tape diagram and the algebraic method and then come back and check your work and then we will do the subtraction one together. Okay, so now I have my first tape that equals 12 and my second tape that shows the 8 and the x and if I took 8 off of this side and if you're still confused you can actually break it into 12ths and take off 8 of them and if we do that, if we take 8 off of the 12, 8 plus 4 equals x. So we would show that algebraically, 8 plus x, we want this on a side by itself. So we have to do whatever is going to help us get this 8 to 0. And we know that we have to subtract 8 or add the opposite, so the additive inverse. So 8 minus 8 is 0, so now I'm just left with x over here, and 12 minus 8 is 4, so we worked backwards. Alright, subtraction is a little different because you're actually, the variable is actually the larger number. So this is going to be like your d, right here. And what we're showing is that if we take this and we have our 7 and we had taken 5 away, it would give us the whole amount. So now we can do 5 and 7 together make up the D. So 5 plus 7 is 12. And we're going to check it by plugging it back in. We think d is 12. So 12 minus 5, does that make a true statement with 7 on the opposite side? It does, so that checks out. How does that work algebraically? d minus 5 equals 7. So again, we want to use the additive inverse. What do we have to do to a minus 5 
to get it to zero. So I'm going to show it a little bit different here. D minus 5 plus 5, that cancels out. And so because we added 5 to one side, we have to do it to the other. So that is why our D equals 12. So many people like the horizontal method, I mean, sorry, the vertical method going down. There are some people that really enjoy this method. Um, so I'm showing you both ways. I don't care necessarily which you do. The vertical, where we write the, what we're doing, the additive inverse, underneath, like this, or like this, as long as if you do it to one side, you have to do it to the other because of that principles of equality. Okay, as long as you do it to one side, to keep this equal, to keep the sides equal, we have to do it to both sides. All right, last slide. Yes, remember, I know that you can do these in your head, but I want you to practice with the tape diagram and the algebraic method. It says what you prefer, but I guess what I'd really like you to do, if you're really understanding the addition, I'd like you to show the subtraction in both ways. If you need the addition, you can. I'm going to pause and I'm going to give you a chance to do both and then start the video again just because of time. So while I have it paused, I would like you to pause and either do just the subtraction or the subtraction and the addition in both ways and then come back. Remember, this is your learning. Take ownership. All right, I'm going to go through the addition one, even though I know some of you didn't do it. So I started with my big number because this was addition. I knew this was the biggest number. So if I took off, if I had my 20 and I had 12 taken away, I'd be left with what my x is. So what number plus 12 is 20? So I can see that we have 8 left. If I did it algebraically, what would we have to do to this plus 12 to get to it to 0? So x plus 0. We would, it's added, so we'd have to subtract. So the additive inverse. That leaves just x on this side, and 20 minus 12 is 8 on this side. And then I checked my work, 8 plus 12 is 20. For the subtraction, our first bar, the whole thing, stands for f because it's subtraction. So f, and then I'm showing that I took 10 away, and when I took 10 away, I was left with 15. Now I can see that the whole bar must be 15 plus 10 is 25. So that's how you do it with the tape diagram. If you do it algebraically, what would we have to do to this minus 10 to get to uh, f plus 0? And again, we could write in f plus 0 like that, but we don't need to because f plus 0 is just going to be f. So the minus 10 plus 10 cancels out. If you do the plus 10 to one side, you have to do it to the other. So 25 plus 10 is Sorry, 15 plus 10 is 25, okay? You can also do this with algebra tiles. It's easier to see algebra with addition than subtraction, but you could use algebra tiles if you would like. So if you still need a different method to solve, please let me know. And yes, you have IXL to do on all three ways. All right, that's it for this lesson. We out.